Do you remember about 10 years ago, scientists were trying to make the Higgs boson particle? I see some nods. They sometimes call it the God particle, and they had a theory it existed, but they hadn't been able to prove it yet. So they decided to smash together two beams of protons to try to make it using the CERN Large Hadron Collider in Switzerland. I remember this being all over the news at the time and the public freaking out, being like, ah, you're going to build a black hole. And the scientists being like, nah, it'll be all right. And the public being like, nah, you're going to kill us all with this machine. Yep. So I work at one of those machines. <laughs> but it all ended up fine. You might remember that they did make a Higgs boson particle and they did not make a black hole, and we're all still here, so science success. But yeah, we do have one of these particle acceler accelerators here in Australia, and it's called the Australian Synchrotron, or as it's affectionately known, the Science Donut. As I mentioned, I work at the Synchrotron as a scientist, and but before I started working there, I knew what I was getting myself into because I had been there before. Back when the synchrotron first started operating, they had an open day. And so, of course, my family of nerds and I went along. Now, when I say my family and I went along, you might be picturing, say, a couple of parents and maybe a few school-aged young kids. I'm the youngest of three kids, and I was in my early 20s at the time. So here we are, my family, Five full adults, so excited for a fun day out at the Synchrotron. We got a tour around the big round building, the Science Donut. We heard from the scientists about all the awesome work they do there. And we saw all the cool science kit. And you better believe my siblings and I bought matching Synchrotron T-shirts. <laughs> oh, yes. It was great. The staff took a photo of us and they put it on the internet and then we lived there forever. <laughs> it was a great day out for a nerdy science family. What I learnt on that open day is that our synchrotron is a little different from the Large Hadron Collider in a couple of main ways. So first, we just have the one beam instead of two. And second, our beam is made of electrons instead of protons. You remember electrons, right? They're those tiny little negatively charged particles and they sit in the shells around the atom, the centre of the atom. Right, so we have those and they're zipping around. I like to think of it kind of like a racetrack. Now, what is wild to me is that every year, people from all over the world flock to Melbourne for the Grand Prix. My friend Craig broke out from the Republic of West Australia to come over for it this year. It's huge. Now what these race enthusiasts don't know is that just a bit further out of the city, we have a racetrack that's open, operating six days a week that is arguably far more impressive. <laughs> that's right, it's the science donut. The difference is that instead of having F1s doing about 300 kilometres an hour, we have electrons zipping around at the speed of light. That's about 300,000 kilometres per second. So we bake our electrons fresh in-house using an electron gun. So this works like an old cathode ray tube that we used to have in old TVs. So we have this bit of tungsten metal and we heat it up and when it gets red hot, it shoots out electrons into a vacuum. We then speed up the electrons and when, once they leave the electron gun, they're already travelling at about half the speed of light. We then speed them up even more and after 12 metres, they're already going at the speed of light. And it's at this speed that we shoot them off into a big ring called the booster ring where we boost their energy. Once their energy is high enough, we shoot them out again into another outer ring called the storage ring. And so it's these two rings, these inner and outer rings, that give the synchrotron its nickname, the science donut. Just like two rings of delicious baked electron goodness. So just to give you an idea of scale here, 
This outer ring, the storage ring, is about 41 metres across. So there's a big donut. Now the electrons like to travel in a straight line. So to get them to go around the rings, we have to bend them using magnets. So we deflect the electrons around the corners using the electromagnetic fields from the magnets. And once we do this, the electrons give off a light called synchrotron light. This synchrotron light is brighter than a million suns and we capture it using special equipment that comes off that storage ring. And this equipment will focus and tune and shape that beam of synchrotron light so that we can shoot it at samples like a laser. And we can figure out some cool stuff with this. We uh, can figure out the composition or the atomic structure of the sample, or we can create an image of it. So one example is back in 2020, we had some COVID researchers come along and they were able to use the synchrotron light to figure out the exact spot on human cells where the COVID virus binds to our cells. Now, by now, you've probably seen an image of the COVID virus. It looks like a ball with some spikes on it. Actually, it kind of looks like those massage balls that your physio makes you buy when you turn 30 and need it to ease all your <laughs> physical ailments that you suddenly have. Anyway, those spikes on the COVID virus, they are spike proteins. And these, is, these spike proteins are what allows the COVID virus to bypass our cell membranes and enter into our human cells. They do this by attaching to little sites on the surface of our cells called neuropillin receptors. So the researchers were able to use the synchrotron light to figure out the structure of these neuropillin receptors and they were then able to identify the exact spot, the exact molecules on those receptors where the virus attaches. This is really important because then they were able to show that if they can block those sites with something synthetic, then they can stop the COVID virus from attaching to the cell and therefore decrease infection from COVID. We can also use the synchrotron for art. A few years back, we had some conservators bring in a Degas painting. So the team at the synchrotron uh, shot a beam of synchrotron light at this painting. It was Degas portrait of a woman. And what they did no damage whatsoever to the painting, thankfully, but what they discovered was that below the surface of that famous painting on top was another painting of a different woman that has been hiding there this whole time. So back when this painting was created, they used metals for the different pigments in the paints. And so the synchrotron light was able to be used to create a map of those metals, which is essentially mapping the different pigments. And so we revealed that image underneath in that way. Now this painting was created in 1880. So it's pretty amazing that we've been able to uncover this secret portrait that's just been hiding in front of us this whole time. The synchrotron is having another open day. This October is the first one we're having for a few, in a few years. Um, and anyone can come along and see the place that all this awesome work takes place. So come along, bring your families. I can 100% guarantee you we will not make any black holes, but I have it on good authority that there will be T-shirts available on the day so that you, like me, can match with your family of science nerds. <laughs> Thanks.